Do you love breakdowns? Do you need stats? Do you crave insight? Download the All-Star app, UFC, Bellator, PFL1 Championship, and more. Ad-free, fully customizable. Download the best app in the business. Link in descriptions. Let's get into the main event of this show, man. Uh, UFC Vegas 69. It was a, a main event. Like multiple opponent changes for Aaron Blanchfield. And she accepted them all. She was just like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I don't give a fuck. Like, give me somebody. Give me a big name. Give me a step up in competition. And, man, she showed out, right? She came in and she banged it out in the first round. I was just like, and she was clipping Andrade with the right head a few times, you know, cocking that head back a little bit. You know what I mean? It didn't seem like there was much power because she ate those punches pretty well. But she was clipping her, right? It was a pretty even stand up battle on the feet Andrade looked like she did a little bit more damage but uh that second round came and and blanchfield was like ah i don't think i want to do that anymore let's uh let's take it to the ground and and once it got to the ground Andrade looked like she was lost and just gave up the neck you know what i mean i don't want to say that about fighters but it just seemed like she just gave up the neck and uh and blanchfield got the tap pretty quick what did you think, Patrick, about that fight, the performance, and and the step up in competition? Yeah, no, um, I, I thought the most surprising thing to me was how good Blanchfield looked on the feet. Right, she was clipping on Draj uh, a couple times. It looked like the power shots, you know, they didn't necessarily really hurt on Draj, but a couple of them buckled her, or at least stung her enough that she seemed to, um, you know, back off a little bit or be a little bit more timid and more protective of just leaving her chin out there. Um, and then, yeah, once it got to the ground, it's one of those things where Blanchfield looks so smooth, but at the same time, Andrade definitely just was like, I'm just going to get up and not, you know, try and protect anything. And Blanchfield took advantage. It's a, it's a weird fight for me. Cause one, one thing I keep seeing everywhere is like, Oh, Blanchfield beat, you know, the bigger, stronger Andrade. If you look at the fight, no, no, Blanchfield, it looks like a size up compared to Andrade. Like that's step one is like Blanchfield looked like an entire like mini weight class up <laughs> over Andrade. And then secondly, like, again, it, it was a beautiful performance and it's not anything to take away from Blanchfield. I'm excited to see her fight for the title or whatever, you know, number one contender fight. That's the only two options for her at this point. But Andrade also just kind of went in there brawling. And then, like you said, kind of did give up the neck. And her post-fight, I don't know how to take her post-fight comments. I don't know if you saw those where she's like, I wasn't even really in there to win. I was just looking to make money. And I tripled my contract by taking this fight short notice. And it's like, okay, like how much of that is true? How much of that is not? I have no idea. Um, I know she wants to go back down to straw weight. Great. But I mean, no matter what, it's still impressive that Blanchfield is now the only person to stop on Josh 125, not named Shevchenko, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, yeah, it was, it was an awesome first round, great second round too from Blanchfield. I, it's just a weird, weird fight. Like the whole, like you said, so many opponent changes. This comes together like a week and a half, if that. Like, all right, it, it's just, it's a weird, weird situation. Yeah, the, you know, I, I understand. That Andrade wanted to take this fight so to renegotiate renegotiate her contract and get more money and get paid. Of course, we've heard many things in the past about her struggles with you know money and 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 getting the best contract from the UFC and her you know relying on OnlyFans and you know it, it's something that really bothers me because she's been a, a top fifteen fighter in multiple weight classes. I think three different weight classes. Three. For, yeah. yeah, for the last I don't even know how many years, and she's still talking about she doesn't get paid enough, and she's trying to get a pay bump, and and it's just sad that uh, she has to kind of like put that out there, and and she took this short notice fight. It's it's crazy because heading into the fight, she beat Chukagian, who is one of the one of the best flyweights out there. She beat Cynthia Calvillo, and she beat Lauren Murphy, which I felt like Lauren Murphy was probably the best win out of all of those. And I, f I feel like all of those wins, she had a full camp. You know what I mean? She's yeah. going into all of those fights as a smaller female, but she had a full camp to prepare, strategize, 
you know, get in certain positions where her opponent is strong, escape out of those positions, drill all that. So I think that's so, so important as a fighter, you know what I mean? Because preparation, man, you see a lot of these fighters that do camps and fight. They don't take short notice fights. Justin Gaethje, when's the last time you saw him take a short-notice fight? Never, because he knows that he cannot risk losing. You know what I mean? He's an entertaining fighter, and his his fighting style is risky, but he understands, like, what he needs to do when he gets in there and he gets into tough spots. He knows how to escape those spots. He knows what his opponent's strengths are, and, and you got a head coach that's guiding you through all of that process, right? This one, a week and a half, a week, you, there's, there's no time. You're just going in to cut weight. And then you're going out there to fight. And sometimes it works out. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. sometimes it does. We've seen it work out for many fighters. But Blanchfield, she's got that equalizer. Like, once she gets to the ground, man, she's just so tough. And and like you said, she's the she was like she was like the supersized version of Andrage. You know what I mean? Everybody was like, yeah, Andrage. Yeah. I think people think Andrage is much bigger than she actually is. Just because the yeah. fighting style she has. Right, Pat? Like, it's, it's, I think people are clouded. Their judgment is clouded by that. And I was clouded by it as well heading into the fight. I was like, yeah, she beat Calvillo. She beat, you know, she's so powerful. She's going to lift up, you know, Blanchfield. And and we kind of like glossed over Blanchfield's like grappling abilities. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure yeah. her wrestling defense is really good as well. And she, Andras never even got close to like getting, getting close to a takedown or anything like that. Right. She, she got taken down and overpowered and kind of like just laid there. Like once she got taken yeah. down and she went right to side control, she just like laid there against the cage. Like, okay, um, oh, is it gonna be over anytime soon? Like, you know, I I might have like d dinner reservations. You know what I mean? Like, I got paid for this fight, so you know, I might have to go get some barbecue or something like that, some Korean barbecue. I don't know, but that's what it felt like. And uh, Blanchfield, man, she took advantage of that. And th in this game, if you don't take advantage of your spots, you know, two three losses people forget about you look at dominic reyes man like he was yeah. in a very good spot and and you know you, you didn't take advantage of those spots that you had and now where is dominic reyes like he's on a four fight three fight losing streak people are starting to give up on him so uh blanchfield she's a young young star i don't think she has that like i don't know they call her cold-blooded but does she have that like does she have that it factor though like valentina shevchenko I mean, she could, right? Like, she hasn't had a lot of opportunity to be on the mic or do, like, right? And when she has, she's just kind of been like, all right, I'm just a girl that does MMA, right? And um, I mean, that's not true. She's she's got a personality, but I don't know that she has the same type of it factor. And and it's it's such a weird thing because, right, like, I mean, I, I've been watching Blanchfield since Invicta. Like, I always knew she was going to be a a hot prospect and, and do really well. This is one of those weird situations where it eerily reminds me of Cody Garbrandt, right? Like dude came up out of nowhere, beat number 10 or 11 ends up fighting Cruz wins like styles on him, wins the belt. And then just has loss after loss after loss. And I'm not saying that's what's happening with Blanchfield, right? She could easily stay on top of the division, but the way people are hyping her up, like, being like, this is like the new champ. Like, even if like, it, it'll either be, she beats Valentina or once Valentina retires, she'll be uh, like, I don't know. I, I feel like we got to see more and, and we, it's just a weird scenario. This is the whole thing about rankings too, right? Because Andrade was number two, took a short notice fight and lost. She instantly bypasses everyone else in the division. And Andrade was her only real test right? Molly McCann, Sarah Alpar, those are, those are not tests for, those are, are basic entry-level fights for somebody like Blanchfield. This was her only real test. I'm still, I, I don't know what's going to happen. It, it's going to be interesting. Uh, and, and again, Andrade does seem bigger. I think because she seems bigger at straw weight some of the time, mm -hmm. right? But like at flyweight, yeah, she's usually not bigger and Valentina is going to be bigger. It's going to be Interesting. And I don't know how well that's going to sell or the hype. I haven't seen a ton of movement on metrics that make me think that Blanchfield is a real like needle mover right now. Doesn't mean she can't be, but it, this whole scenario to me, this whole card was so weird. It's surreal. It's so many yeah. ways, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Blanchfield, um, 
you know, she's definitely skilled and she went in there and beat a former champ, a strawweight champ. And, and Andrade is, she is big and powerful for the strawweight division. Whenever we seen her fight against like another flyweight, she didn't look very big. You know what I mean? She's powerful. Yes. She can throw hammers and she has, and she's one of my favorite fighters to watch in the, like out of all the, the, the divisions, out of all the UFC, cause she puts it all out there. And I just saw a statistic on Twitter. Someone put up that she has, this is her fifth time being stopped in the UFC. That's the most out of any female fighter in the history of the, of the UFC. So it just shows you like she goes in there and she puts it all out there. Either she's kill or be killed. And, and it's very rare. A killer be killed fighter becomes a champ. Yeah. Not many, not many out there. Kill or be killed. Like, become a champ unless like the UFC is massaging their way and Andrade has had a rough road to like becoming a champion it's not it hasn't been easy for her right and uh but Blanchfield she's very she has a high ceiling you know what I mean she went in there and she really put it on the line in that first round went punch for punch and uh and was doing really well against Andrade and uh I don't know she got clipped a couple times you know she I think she was grabbing for the clinch you know, one time she got punched by Andrade, so she felt the power, and uh, she probably got some good corner advice between rounds. And then she went into the second round and said, "All right, let's uh, let's get it to the ground and use your strength against uh, Andrade." And 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 yeah, it's weird, man. This is a weird card, and uh, let's let's get into this comment. Roth Window Cleaning Services. Roth, we're looking for sponsors, man. Get get down. Uh, Andrade is big and powerful. If one of those shots landed on Aaron, it would have been over. I can't disagree with that. No need to say Andrade isn't that big. Well, Andrade isn't that big for flyweight she, division. If you seen, did you did you watch the fight, Roth? It's you saw them stand next to each other. Like there was a yeah, big they... big difference, right? Uh, Aaron had the technique to sub her. That's all. She does have the technique. We're not saying she doesn't have the technique, but Andrade once it got to the ground, yeah, it doesn't seem like she was ready for anything. And sometimes, man, these fighters, you don't know what they're preparing. You don't know yeah. how they're training outside of camp. We just saw Cyril gone tell everybody on an interview, take it for what it's worth, that he doesn't even train for fights unless he got a fight signed and he doesn't even wrestle unless he's facing a wrestler or like wrestle in the camp. Like, do you believe that or not? I don't know. If it's true, that's concerning and put the house on Jones. Because if Jones Maybe, saw that... But is Jones doing anything different though? Jones was notorious for... <laughs> like, yeah, I yeah. think that's it makes it kind of perfect because he's the one yeah. that's also notorious being like... Oh yeah, Gus. When I fought you the first time, I was doing coke and like trade for a week. It's like, all right, just have these two guys that don't trade fight each other. Why not? Like, but what fighter doesn't do coke? You know, what I mean, it's just yeah. like it seems like it's just a prerequisite to to being a, an animal like that, right? So, so uh, Aaron Blanchfield, do you do you do you think she should fight the winner of uh of Grasso and uh, and uh, Valentino Shevchenko? I think so. Um, I mean, it's one of those things where again. She she got a win over a former title contender and, and a former strawweight champ. Uh, and Andrade is not an easy out, even if it was short notice. And and who else is Valentina going to fight at this point, right? Valentina's cleared out the division mostly. This, this would be the first time in a while that, and this is again providing Valentina wins. If Grasso gets it done, then you got to run that back and have Blanchfield fight somebody else. Um, just because Valentina's been champ forever. But otherwise, if Valentina wins, there's n almost no one else for her to fight that makes a lot of sense. Like Blanchfield Wood versus Valentina is the first time I'd be excited for a Valentina defense in quite a while. Like not taking anything away from what Grosso has done to get here, but I'm expecting that to kind of go pretty much a, a decision or, or a ground and pound TKO for Valentina, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's just... It's one of those things. They've cleared out the division. You might as well at this point let Blanchfield get a shot at it. I mean, it's it's going to be Valentina's newest and toughest test probably. So why not? The, U the UFC, man, it's, it's very apparent and clear that they love Valentina Shevchenko. She is a, a media darling. She flies around the world. She's like James Bond in, in many aspects of the UFC. She's always in a different country training with – with all different t people. She's a very good ambassador, let's say, for the UFC. She speaks multiple yes. languages. She represents yeah. multiple countries. Um, 
They would want her to continue fighting and defending that title and winning. That's what they want. That's the business that they're going to be in, right? And and Mexico is is like a, a new, I don't want to say new location, but it's a location. And Central America is a location where the UFC kind of wants to wants to blow up in now, especially right. with the PI and uh, with Mexican champions like Yair is the champion now. Uh, Moreno's a champion. They're giving Grasso. Uh, you could have your views on like, does she deserve that title shot? But sometimes, like in the case of uh, Zhang Wei Li, it's it all depends on business. Like, do, do they want to make money in a certain uh, region, right, or, or a certain demographic? And if you look at demographic, like a Sean O'Malley, you know, I mean, that's a guy that has a certain demographic for him that he's that's pushing him, right? But yeah, for for like title challengers, they just want Valentina to fight people that they could take advantage of. And if they if if like let's say if uh, Grasso wins, that's great for the UFC as well because now they got another Mexican champ, they got another champ from that region that they could maybe make money by doing another massive pay per view in Mexico City, right? It's all about money, and people don't. I always tell people, man, is now the UFC is about money. They don't give a fuck about the fighters. They don't give a shit about the fighters. The decisions that they're making right now is not about the fighters. It's about money, right, Pat? Yeah, no, I mean, 100%. I, I want to touch on something you said because I think it's very important to point it out and, and you worded it perfectly, right? Valentina is an ambassador for the brand or the USC. That that She's not a needle mover in the sense of she's not you know going to make a ton of pay-per-view buys, be sold or anything like that. I mean, really, there have been few, very few women, unfortunately, outside of Rousey and, and Cyborg who have really moved the needle in a main event spot. Valentina isn't one of them. But what she is great at is, again, being an ambassador for the sport, going to multiple countries and speaking multiple languages, presented as, you know, this, you know, beautiful debutante woman who also knows how to fight a female James Bond. That's how they market her. It's perfect for them to start moving into regions that they want to and have her as flyweight champ. And, yeah. and you're exactly right, too, with Grasso, where they're definitely making a move right now trying to get into uh, both, you know, Central America, Mexico, South America. That's a new frontier for them. And so with Moreno as champ, they'd love to see Grasso as champ, too. It's it's always about the money. I mean, if it, it's been apparent it's about the money beforehand. If you looked kind of like before Endeavor bought them, if you looked between some of the lines, ever since Endeavor bought them, it's been just very clear cut. I mean, speaking of Andrade, right? They made her first title defense be in China against Wei Li, who at the time, his best win in the UFC had been, I believe, Tisha Torres, right? Who was like ranked number 10, another huge push. They're making a champ fly across the world to go defend her belt for the very first time after, like you said, she's been winning in multiple weight classes, all that other stuff. And she... She has to go do this. And they did that because they were hoping Whaley would win. Whaley won. And the very next day, they renegotiated the media rights with China to get double what they were originally getting with Whaley as champ. That's big. It, yeah, it's big. huge. It's it's always about the money. Every single decision is about the money. <laughs> I I was there cage side for that fight, man. Live in Shenzhen. Uh, it was an incredible moment, dude. Like I've, Jessica Andrade, yeah. she's, she's loved, dude. Like by fans like even in china after that fight was over nobody booed her when she was outside the cage all the chinese fans were trying to take pictures with her you know what i mean she and she was accepting of all of that you know what i mean she's she's actually a pretty decent ambassador man i wish they would pay her yeah. a lot of money just Dude, on Josh. it's not i mean if she truly tripled up on her contract for this fight then yeah good on her man like that's awesome and and yeah it's it's nuts to me she's talking about how she's struggling for money when Wait, are you still there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All right, you froze for a minute. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, it's it's crazy that she's talking about struggling for money uh, when she's she's a first ballot Hall of Famer, right? There's no way she doesn't get into the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. given everything she's accomplished as a strawweight champion, wins at 135, like uh, flyweight contender. It's nuts that that's it's you know it's the UFC man. They don't. It's it is all about the money. You said you. Nail on the head there. <laughs> yeah. Well, from time to time, I'll freeze because I think, you know, the UFC is, you know, they're, they're <laughs> right, trying to do right, some exactly funny right. stuff. You know, whenever we're talking about them, they, they try to do some funny things. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So going back to like Aaron getting a title shot, I think she should get it. You know what I mean? I think this win 
like showed us that she's ready for the spotlight. Is she ready yeah. to become a champion? I don't know. In her eyes, she is. You know what I mean? If you're in the UFC and you're fighting top 15 competition, you think you're going to become the champion. You you want the bigger fights. You don't want to dodge anybody, especially if they're going to line you up for a title shot. It looks like that's what they're doing. I don't think they really want a Grosso against Blanchfield, though. I don't think that that's the fight that they want. Probably not, but, I mean, it depends. If you do... Uh, if you do Grosso versus in Mexico in Mexico, yeah, then that's I mean that's yes. what they that's what they would do. If Grosso wins, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what happens. But I also I also think they'll do if Grosso wins, they, they'll they've got to give Valentina a rematch, right? Like if she's been the only flyweight champ. Yeah. Right or no, no, there's I forgot oh, about Nico. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know. but yeah, I mean she's she's been the longest reigning flyweight champ. We'll yeah, put it that way. Nico, talk about a bad circumstances, right? On her yeah. part and the UFCs as well. You know what I mean? But Valentina slides right in at the perfect moment. It says, "Hey, your ambassador is here. Yeah, let's, uh, let's 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 get our let's get the train rocking." You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah with uh, with that, yeah, Grasso get her to the fight. Valentina wins, great. If Grasso wins, great. They get the rematch. They probably want a trilogy. To be honest with you. With, yep. with that one, you know what I mean? Because then they could f- go back states. You could go to Europe with that. You could go to Mexico City, somewhere in Mexico with it, you know what I mean? And make tons of money. Um, and if and Blanchfield's waiting in the wings, she's the girl next door, the American, you know what I mean? Like there's always good, yep. it's always good to have an American in the mix. Um, how many Americans are really in the mix nowadays? Um, in, in title spots, you know what I mean? It seems like isn't it like not many. Zero? <laughs> Not many, it's, right? I'm trying to think who's who's an American champion right now. Aljo, and then is that it? Yeah, but it does think... America support Aljo though? Like it, he's yeah. he's like one of the guys that they don't really really. <laughs> Aljo's an incredible talent, man. He he's he's like shut a lot of people up with with what he's done. You know what I mean? Like really, like everybody underestimate him. There's so many champions that come in. And and yeah. they're underestimated, and we're probably underestimating Air Blanchfield as well. You know what I mean? And she's gonna go in there and, and take down Valentina and choke her out too, just the way she did to to Andras. Who knows? We don't know until she steps in there. But uh, we gotta wait for uh, Valentina and uh, Grasso, which I think they fight in two weeks. Yeah. And uh, and it is like if Valentina wins, I could see them like booking that. If that fight's quick, like Valentina goes in there and finishes Grasso, they they book Aaron Blanchfield right away right away you know what i mean like another pay-per-view because they need like title fights man like 